you know, it's interesting talking to more American Jews. I, I feel there was something a little bit more special about Montreal Jews and keeping some of those traditions a bit more and a lack of assimilation, um, which I saw more of or I tend to see more of in America, uh, partially because I believe America was more inviting when it came to the assimilation. And also, I also think English is a factor, and that's an interesting thing about Quebec versus, let's say, Ontario, which is Canada, but English-speaking Canada. Here, there were various reasons why Jews were less integrated into society, and I think that allowed for the old shtetl culture to continue to survive here. These Ashkenazic Jews, they ended up, they didn't participate in the Catholic and mostly French school systems. As a result of exclusion, they ended up in English school systems. Uh, and so their mindset, and their, I don't mean this in a, a negative way, indoctrination was with more of the English Canadian story. So I think some of the things that happened with my parents uh, being, you know, well, my father's case, he was born in Montreal, my mother was not, but sort of coming from immigrant families, those choices and the way the society was created there had impacts on the next generation. So growing up, you know, we had mandatory French classes and whatnot, but we didn't speak French as naturally as, as other people did, even though we spoke various languages and were learning four languages at school. And I think part of it was this continued cultural divide uh, and in a sense also a lack of comfort in around speaking French. It's such a hot topic here uh, and there was so much uh, history to it and so much of a feeling of you needed to speak French and it was, it was a politicized thing that it almost made you incapable of speaking it in this weird way like someone who is just being, you know, the pressure's on you and you have to do something right now, you know, to do something on demand and you feel like even though you're fully intellectually capable of it, for some reason you can't do it as well. But yes, language was a large factor, and I think that growing up in a French-Canadian Catholic society was not the same as those Jews that were in New York, that were in Chicago, in Los Angeles, or Toronto, uh, where there was more opportunity. Because it's not, it wasn't just a ling purely linguistic thing. It's a I guess you call it ethno-linguistic thing, there were limited opportunities. And to this day, I mean, it, it's kind of unspoken, but it's, there really are, you know, certain types of people will be in certain jobs here. Um, and you're not going to find, you're rarely going to find a Jewish, Ashkena an Ashkenazic English-speaking Jew in a high-powered position in the government of Quebec. It's just not going to happen. That could very well happen in New York. As a matter of fact, it happens often wouldn't happen here at all. There are natural, I wouldn't describe them as ceilings. I mean, I don't, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying it's, it's naturally sort of evolved that way. All that to get back to the thesis, which is we didn't have that opportunity. I feel like in America, people were embarrassed by Yiddish. They wanted to move beyond it. It's interesting because in our, our global shtetl, uh, at Yidla Price's adventure, we also went to Israel, where there as well, there was an embarrassment. There was a major embarrassment factor, and it was more than embarrassment. It's something that's, you know, oh, this, this looks unclassy. It was more, we want nothing to do with that old conception of who we were as weak people. We have a totally different revisionist view of ourselves, and we're going to use language as a, as a key way to do that. Um, so definitely in America, I felt like there was some lighter version of that. And I don't think it existed here to the same extent.